It's 1937 and Germany is at its maximum power. And you're a rich German person that has a chance to ride a Titanic in the sky and go to the United States. Do you know what's the Titanic of the skies? Its original name is the Hindenburg, but the similarities it had with the Titanic, they gave it this nickname, Titanic of the skies. Hindenburg was the fastest way from Europe to the United States, and that means flying over the Atlantic Ocean. Hindenburg is the biggest man-made object that can fly in the sky. The length of it is 245 meters, and that means it's three times a 747. But how did this thing fly? Hindenburg was a balloon, and for it to fly, it needed hydrogen. But back then, they didn't know that hydrogen is no joke, and that is why they did this. They filled this thing up with hydrogen, got the richest people of Germany to get inside it, and they shipped away to the US. Hydrogen would take this ginormous thing to the skies with no problem. But hydrogen was not the original idea. The original idea was to use helium. But helium is very rare, and hydrogen is very dangerous, and helium is not dangerous at all. And since they couldn't get helium, they went with hydrogen. They didn't think that hydrogen is very dangerous, and with one spark, it could explode. They knew it was an explosive type of gas, and that is why they took some safety measures. The outside skin was an anti-fire fabric. Another safety idea they had is that they didn't put all the hydrogen in one tank, and they used multiple tanks throughout the airship. Hydrogen has another plus, and that is, it has way more power than helium. And since hydrogen has more power, they were able to fit more people inside this thing. Well, let's go inside this thing and see what's going on. The inside of this thing was like a hotel. It had different types of rooms and a huge lobby, and it even had a piano. It had a smoking room as well. It's kind of funny, an airship that is being carried around with a very explosive gas had a smoking room. It's cool to know that this airship was the first airline from Europe to the US. It was called the Delag Airlines. Hindenburg goes to the US and back 10 times with no problems. On May 4th, 1937, Hindenburg picks up its passengers for the very last time and heads off to the United States. For its time, this was very futuristic. Even though it was very comfortable and luxurious inside, it was very fast as well because in four days, it would get from Germany all the way to New York. The cabin was two stories and the biggest room was the lobby. The people that rode in this thing were very rich people. It had huge windows that you could see outside very easily. And when you see this thing lift off, they kind of felt even more powerful. Going from Europe to the US, Hindenburg took the same route the airplanes took today, meaning going over Greenland. Even though this was an airline, it was kind of like a tourist attraction thing and it showed cool places. In its route, it would go over New York City so the passengers could see the city. But obviously they couldn't land in New York because there was no space for this thing. And that is why for it to land, it had to go to New Jersey. When Hindenburg got to New Jersey, they were told that the weather is not good. Go around in the sky and wait for our call. 
When the weather got better, they told him to come down slowly. When it was coming down, the captain noticed that the back of the airship was lower than the front. And that is why he told the workers to release hydrogen from the front so we can straighten this thing out. But they noticed it's not straightening out. The back was staying lower. They also told the workers from the back to come to the front. They could never exactly find out why the back of the ship was sagging, but they guessed that the back of the ship had a puncture and hydrogen was leaking out of it. But Hindenburg was coming down slowly and slowly. But when it was coming down, all of a sudden, the Hindenburg caught on fire and a huge explosion happened. They never noticed why it caught on fire, but the theories they came up with, it was leaking in the back and a spark came from somewhere and lit this thing on fire. The weather was also cloudy. They don't know if the spark came from above or from inside. But either way, this thing just like the Titanic that had the richest people inside it, crashed into the floor. And just like the Titanic where the back sunk first, this thing sagged from the back. But in the Titanic, they froze to death. In the Hindenburg, they burned to death. Since Hindenburg was close to the ground, it didn't kill everybody. And from the 97 people that were inside it, 35 of them died and the rest of them stayed alive. The Hindenburg kind of killed the airship business and people just realized how dangerous they could get. They also say that the 10 times that it came from Germany was kind of lucky. When the Hindenburg was landing, there were a lot of people that huddled over it to watch it land because it was very interesting. Even nowadays, if something like this is landing, it's very interesting. Just imagine back then, people were underneath it and this thing was spewing out flames like a volcano. A lot of these people had burning injuries and also one person died. Melted aluminum and all types of fabrics were burning and coming down on people's heads. A lot of people that died in this incident were people that saw the flame in the Hindenburg and jumped out the window. The people that jumped out, most of them died. And if they didn't jump, there was a chance they could actually survive it. The Germans were extremely proud of the Hindenburg and they proudly represented the German flag in the back. As you know, the Hindenburg was an airship and accidents that happened to airships throughout history, it had no survivors, but the Hindenburg didn't kill all the people. But this airship was extremely lucky because the incident happened while it was landing, so it was close to the ground. But this good luck had a bad luck right behind it because while it was landing, it was being filmed and while it caught on fire and it burning up is all on tape. But don't think back then it was like right now that someone takes out their phone and records the whole thing with ease. There was one camera in that whole area and it was for a news network and it took it like three hours for it to set up and luckily it was ready to record this thing burn. And this good luck for the news network was terrible luck for the Nazi Germany. And it was kind of an embarrassment for them. Back then, everybody thought anything made in Germany was the best product. But the Hindenburg was an embarrassment for them. I think Hitler was extremely pissed about this whole situation. And that is why two years later, he started World War II. But don't believe that, it didn't have nothing to do with the Hindenburg. 